Hey everyone, it's Nightlight9, and in this video, I want to go over Trial of Bahamut EX1. Reason is, um, we're well underway with the six-month anniversary now, and with the Ifrit and Bahamut double summon video and all that stuff, I really thought it was time to try EX1. So originally, after clearing Trial of Bahamut very hard, I was like, you know what, uh, that was plenty hard for me, and I didn't really want to you know, knock my head against the wall a million times to try uh, EX1 Bahamut. And that was back in December, about three months ago, when I posted my video for Bahamut Very Hard. So now I figured it was time to do Bahamut EX1. Let's go ahead and get into the team setup here. We're using Cloud, Tifa, and Aerith. I'll start with Aerith. She is set up for healing. And everybody on this, again, I wanted at least like I'll be honest, I was really aiming for as close to 9,000 HP on everybody as possible. Uh, however, the higher your physical and magical defense are, the more you can kind of sacrifice HP. Okay, but you notice here, healing is at 2,354. That is quite good. Here we have Akira for single target cure because that will be necessary. Here we have a debrave to lower physical attack by one which does make a difference on the dive bombs. Here we just have a, this is a water but it's purely for a stat stick because it has my highest heal percentage of 8.2. For sub equipment, it's healing, it's healing, and also magic defense, and then this is just for HP. So again, uh, the reason I'm not running Chocobo suit is because you can see here, it wouldn't actually give me any more HP because of the way that my R abilities are kind of maxed out right now. So. That's where we are on that. As far as Tifa, again, 9,800 HP, 131 physical, 158 magical defense. She doesn't have impressive physical or magical attack. And honestly, Tiger Fangs here is going to be our main attack because it actually has the highest damage percentage of any weapon that we have on. We're using this, though, for the magic attack decrease. Uh, potency mid, it stacks to high. We will be using that over and over and over again. And and we're bringing Bahamut Knuckles because, honestly, without them, we don't have a reliable way to break Diamond Sigil. And that is crucial to being able to clear this. You only need one person to have it. It works really well for Tifa. Plus, the magic defense and the boost HP, very nice for this fight. So, but you notice here, 370% magic uh, versus 390% physical. So I decided to go with a physical leaning build and use these. Uh, using the older costume for Tifa, and that's because it gives the boost HP and survivability is really the name of the game here. This arrow here is just for physical defense stats. Honestly, it's one of my highest physical defense materia. So it's also got HP and magic defense. Again, survivability. All the rest of these are stat sticks. Just whatever I thought I could do to get all of these numbers up the best that I could. For sub equipment, torn wing, obviously general attack plus physical defense. Nameless down here for HP once again. And then Murasame for physical attack stat. Going over to Cloud, he is our main physical damage dealer. But again, because I'm trying to get HP over 9,000 and his physical defense and magical defense are not that good, but because of that, we are sacrificing his physical attack. Normally, I'd like to see him closer to 3,800, 3,900, but it is what it is because survivability is the most important thing. Uh, Bandage Sword down here is the number one reason we're using Cloud as well. Uh, I don't have this ability on anybody else, so this is really nice. The 4 ATB mid magic defense bonus to everybody on your team is super nice, uh, especially for clearing out the debuff that he puts on you before he does his mega flare. Other than that, stat stick, stat stick, stat stick, all for physical HP. We're using his limit because single target damage is the most important thing here. For sub equipment, this is just for physical attack stat. This is for its attack, but trying to get that eight, that physical attack up and to get his physical ability potency up. If you notice here, we are at level seven, which is maxed just over that threshold two for 80%. We have Amaranth Claws here, HP, physical ability potency, and that's how we've got everybody over 9K. Uh, we've got enough attack, we can take him down. This is the setup, and now we will get into the fight. 
Okay, so starting off with Bahamut EX1, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna hop on Tifa and we're gonna get ready to start upper shotting. And you should be able to do it as soon as the gauge fills. And the goal here is to get it off three times before he does his first Mega Flare. Cloud should be auto doing Sanctuary, even on manual, uh, because if he notices that your team has a debuff to their magic defense, he will do that automatically. So here's our third upper shot, then we'll immediately hop over to Aerith and switch stance. We just want to make sure that Aerith doesn't cast anything right before Mega Flare so that we can immediately do a Kiraga once it hits. Cloud has the least amount of magic defense, so you can see that it does quite a lot of damage to him. He had less than a thousand HP left. Uh, now we will start just kind of doing as much damage as possible, hitting him with upper shots uh, because that's Tifa's most damaging move, but also conveniently it's her debuff. So that is uh, pretty much a no brainer. You will use Somersault almost always when it's off cooldown. Uh, with the exception of trying to cancel a couple abilities, we will just always be using that. And Pretty much the same thing for Cloud's Limit as well. So, this is the first Mega Flare. We're trying to break this gauge down. I mean, the faster you can break it down, the better. But we're going to be probably assuming we'll break it around the time he counts down to three. So here, actually on Tifa 2, I don't do another upper shot. And the reason is I actually want the debuff to wear out so that I can reapply it freshly instead of just adding, you know, like seven seconds onto it. Because in the next phase, he's going to do some magic attacks uh, like Umbral Strikes and Void Flare. And we just want to make sure that we have him uh, fully debuffed so that we're taking the least amount of damage. So here it is. Now that the countdown is over, I start applying that debuff. And I just hopped over to Aerith because I just want to go ahead and cure after he does this Flare Breath because I know I'm going to have plenty of ATB. So we're just keeping his magic attack debuffed as much as possible because all of these moves, you can see the cane next to Umbral Strikes there, they're all just uh, magic attacks. Here I use a Limit Break to cancel Umbral Strikes. He's going to do two just like he did in the very hard fight. and. Basically, it's just a way to get a little bit more extra damage in. You get a little bit more time because every time you delay him, there is a little bit of a delay in between what he's doing. So now we use cross, stri cross slash to delay the second Umbral Strike. Trying to make sure we keep him debuffed here. And he, because Umbral Strike is a single target, this is one of the reasons we brought a regular Cura, just so that we can be a little bit more efficient uh, with Aerith's ATB. So we go ahead and we Cure Cloud, and now we're going to jump on Tifa. And the reason is, once we see him get his countdown to about 1, we don't want to use any of her ATB. We want to just let her get full so that we can cast as many upper shots as possible once he buffs himself. Trying to get as much damage in on Cloud in the meantime, but now I see one. So I'm just going to sit on Tifa and wait. And I'm, if you get really good at it, you can time the upper shot as he goes into this animation here and get just a little bit more out of it. But basically, trying to just take that magic attack up as far down as possible and then getting cloud up as much too so solid man award is coming on to cloud but i wanted cloud to get in his second um round of his sanctuary because Aerith's lasts a lot longer so if i put Aerith's on him then i know that whenever he does his like he's going to have max potency magic defense and it's going to be based on Aerith's buff, which is way longer than his. So it's basically just going to last longer. Okay, everybody survived. I immediately use Aerith's Healing Wind to get everybody back up as much as possible. And then a Kiraga after that. And then just go back to doing damage debuffing. But you will want Aerith to be able to have as much ATB as possible coming up here. Because this comes the Dive Bomb section. Dive Bomb is a single target physical damage ability. It does a lot of damage, and basically all of my characters can barely survive it. So we see the Unity Aura, then he comes. The, here comes the Dive Bomb. 
So I'm just sitting on Aerith. I want to make sure that everybody was full HP, so no matter who he targets, they all have a chance to survive. I'm going to do one debrave to him. I'm trying to time it to where I can still have full ATB by the time he does the move. I'm a little off here, but I was pretty close. So he does his dive bomb. You notice Aerith barely survives it. Immediately cast the Cure on Aerith. Switch stances back. I'm going to try to use... You can use the limit here uh, to get yourself a little bit more time if you can time his animation. I'm not even sure if I actually hit it here or not. But another um, Curic from Aerith. I think I did hit it because it did take him a little bit longer to use that Unity Aura. And this is important because we know that Aerith is only going to survive with 500 and something HP. Which means she has to be over 8600 HP to survive this. So, we have to use another Cura, we don't have another way, and then we also have to get the Debrave off. If we don't hit the Debrave, we also die. But we got it all off, and that's the hardest part of this phase of the fight, is basically rehealing the same target after the first one. Now we immediately jump to Tifa before, like as soon as we knew Aerith was fine. Reason is she has our Rune Resurge. And we want her to have as close to full ATB as possible so she can get those off in quick succession. Now, I'm coming over to Cloud. I didn't put... Because he doesn't have any Diamond Sigils for some reason, he, a lot of times, will not use his Sigil Break. Um, I just go on to him to force him to use it because it is necessary. Now, it's also very tempting with Aerith there to try to heal her up I do not ever worry about it. I can tell you this video is about my fifth time clearing the EX1 version of this fight and not one time has he ever done his regular physical attack to the person that was low from the dive bomb. So you need to get in as many of the breaks as you can and focus on Cloud and Tifa. I can tell you whenever I've gotten on Aerith to try to heal, I was never able to quite break him down in time. So. I know I spent a lot of time talking about that, but I do think it's an important point. Don't even worry about healing. Now here, once he starts this second countdown, you're refreshed and he's going to start from five. You're just pouring on as much damage as humanly possible because that's, that's pretty much all there's left to do here is kill him and you are on a clock. So I'm going to do very limited amounts of healing. I'm not even going to be throwing water as and stuff because I'm just trying to get as much damage in as I can. Every once in a while, I'll throw a Deep Brave because he does do some physical attacks, uh, like this Tail Flail here. Uh, that's an AoE, but he follows it by a single target uh, physical attack move, this Claw Swipe. And that does a pretty good amount of damage, as you can see. 1,886 to Tifa, and she has the highest physical defense of anybody on my team. I think she's sitting at a, like... 150 or so physical defense so i'm doing like i said just enough to kind of heal wise to like make me feel pretty good about it but then not really saving atb intentionally on Aerith, just trying to get in damage for the most part somersault here i use it to cancel the umbral strikes that just came up i don't know if you saw that but again just kind of buying myself a little bit of extra time because eventually he is going to start another countdown and we're going to be on a race. Also kind of important to know that while you're in this, um, you know, physical damage window, I guess you would call it. Uh, it doesn't really have to be physical, but basically while you're in this race here where you're trying to out damage him before he gets his next one off. I'm consistently jumping on every character and jamming their skills, and it's mostly because even though I'm on manual, I don't want to take a chance that they try to cast something that I don't want them to cast. And you can see here, um, I actually let Cloud get pretty high up there because I knew I had a somersault coming. And I was just hoping that he wouldn't use Sanctuary because we don't care about that. Cloud is the main damage dealer. He is hitting the hardest. And so it is kind of important to make sure that he is continually using free energy and not using Sanctuary at this point. Yeah. 
Now, it's kind of funny because Aerith is just, you know, casting water at this point because I have no meaningful uh, damage skill on her. She is purely for utility heals. She has no ability to damage. But uh, it is kind of funny because technically at the end of this, which is coming up shortly, Aerith does get the, uh, the last hit. She does deliver the killing blow to this boss. And so, I don't know. I just kind of find that... Just a bit cheeky. And one other thing I want to point out is I know this video ended up being a little bit longer than usual. And a lot of times, you know, when there's kind of boring parts of fights, I speed them up. Usually anywhere from 30 to 50%. Um, but I'm not on this one because I know that like my last Bahamut video... A lot of people, you know, they still are going to have a little bit of problems, a little bit of trouble even following this. And so I really wanted to make it as simple as possible for everybody to follow this. So that is the entire fight, Bahamut EX1. I still haven't tried EX2 yet, but I might jump into that here uh, soon and see if I can't get a guide up for that as well. I know a lot of people might have already cleared EX1 by this point. Uh, I just didn't because, you know, I didn't... Uh, I thought it was, you know, I was a little bit out of my reach back uh, when I cleared very hard. So hopefully this helped you clear it too. If it did, subscribe for future content. If you are subscribed already, we'll just know I appreciate each and every one of your support. And as always, thanks for watching.